The women came to the tomb carrying the burial spices they had prepared. And they found the entrance stone rolled back from the tomb with God Almighty. And so they walked in, but once inside, they could not find the body of the master Jesus. Verse 4, and they were puzzled, wondering what to make of this. And then out of nowhere, somebody shout out of nowhere. It seemed two men like cascading over them stood there. The angelic host, if you will. And the women were awestruck and bowed down and worshipped the men, saying, Why are you looking? And the men said, Brother, why are you looking for the living one in a cemetery? Why do you look for the living one among the dead? Verse 6 says, he is not here but raised up. Somebody shout, I'm about to get raised up. <laughs> Remember how he told you when you were still back in Galilee that he had to be handed over to sinners, be killed on the cross, but in three days. Three, the number of authority. Three, the number of authority. In three days, rise up. And then they remembered Jesus' words. I want to preach from the subject tonight. My Sunday morning is here now. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is personal tonight. My Sunday morning is here now. Okay, that was the wrong neighbor. Find another one and say, neighbor, Sunday it's not coming tomorrow, but it's here now. Well, that was all right. We warming up, but why don't you find a third neighbor for authority and say, neighbor, my Sunday morning is here now. Now give God a praise. The Lord is bigger than it really is. All right, y'all missing time to shout. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, my situation is like a shadow. It just appears bigger than it really is. And walk this thing. And so that's why things can't manifest because you think the situation is so big that it can't be changed. I got good news for you. God wants to change your situation now. Okay, let me say it one more time. I say God doesn't want to change your situation next week don't want to change your situation tomorrow. He wants to change your situation when? Yeah. Now. Now let's define now for a moment. Can I teach you while I preach it? Now for us is defined as not operates by Kronos, but he operates by Kairos. Clock time, Kronos. God time, Kairos. How many of y'all want to get off the clock? Okay, okay, let just listen. Y'all really want to get off the clock because right now, most of you, your biggest conundrum right now is that you're feeling that it's too late. For some of you, you're saying you're too old now, so I ain't gonna get a husband, I can't own the house. Come on, talk back to me. I can't go back to school because I'm, I'm too old now. Last time I checked, God was producing babies by people who were hundreds of years old. I mean, if we believe the text, come here, Abraham and Sarah. I'm waiting all this time to have a seed of my own. And see, the problem with many of you, uh-oh, here's a bonus, that you won't wait for Isaac, you produce Ishmael. And then you wonder why you got problems. 99 problems. Y'all can't say that. Are you still here? But God sent me on my way to heaven to tell you your son is here now. Let me hear you say Let's examine Jesus' last week on earth. Can we do that? Then we're going on. But God said to parallel Jesus' last week to your life. Somebody shout, I see the parallel. For our dialogue tonight, the weekday experiences. Somebody shout, the weekday experiences. The weekday experiences that Jesus uh, 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 went through represent the challenge. How many going through a challenge? The crowds cheer. Y'all remember the text? Hosanna. 
They're screaming because they believe that this is the king that's going to come and take them out of Roman oppression. And so he rides him on a donkey, fulfilling Zechariah 9 and 9. Can I teach you while I preach it? And so that, that is a contradiction to his position as the Davidic king, according to Mark 11 and 10. And as he enters Jerusalem, they're laying palm trees at his feet and waving palm trees, celebrating him on Sunday. And then from Sunday to Thursday, Bishop, he's teaching in the temple, refuting and rebutting the chief priests, the, the Sadducees. Come on, talk back to me. Uh, and, and then Thursday comes. Somebody shout Thursday comes. Uh, have, have things been going kind of uh, okay and then all of a sudden a day comes when it all starts going south? <laughs> okay, I'm by myself tonight. Somebody shout Thursday comes. And they gather to, can I teach you why I preach it? They gather to partake of the Passover meal. Y'all remember the blood, the blood on the doorpost, and then he passed over. Yeah. And so that's when Jesus prophesies two things. He prophesies his betrayal by Judas. Y'all ain't talking to me. Then he prophesies his denial by Peter. So from Thursday night, Monday, Thursday, from the, the, the Latin word mandatum, which means to give, to entrust, the order, commandment. Uh, so from Thursday night to Friday night, he is betrayed by Judas. Have you ever noticed when things start happening bad, they start happening quickly and all at the same time? Am I by myself tonight? He's betrayed by Jesus. He's denied by Peter. He's mocked and beaten. Y'all ain't talking to me. He's taken from courtroom to courtroom. I feel a whole preacher right there. Uh, he's unjustly sentenced, and then he's crucified. And betrayal is always a sign of a soon-coming promotion. Touch your neighbor and say, I must be getting a fat promotion. Then like Jesus, you've endured harsh and unjustified persecution. Did anybody get persecution on the job? All right. Anybody get persecution in your family because you're trying to live what the Lord said? Yeah. Right. Why are you going to that church? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that persecution, right? Come on, talk back to me. Somebody shout, I'm under persecution. And watch this. Some of y'all get persecuted by people who don't even know you. Number four, like Jesus. Somebody shout, like Jesus. You've been crucified in great part because of the people who used to support you. Come on, you remember those were the same people that said, Bishop, I love you. I'm never going to leave this ministry. I have one of my spirits touch your neighbor. Up, say, hey, but, and when I'm walking in my Sunday morning, and my Sunday morning is right now, good God Almighty, whatever's been blocking me has got to be removed. I'm in the Bible now because verse 2 says that when they came, they came. They came unto the tomb. Good God Almighty. They rolled or they saw the stone rolled away. Now you've got to understand, saints of God, that this stone had to be about one to two tons. And so it was so hard for people to move it. That's why it couldn't have been moved on the inside. And the way that it was positioned, it would have been hard to even open. But touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I know the blockage in front of you has been hard to move. But God's about to send an angel. Because your Sunday morning is here right now. Take me high got to get out of here. Uh, but then secondly, when your Sunday morning comes here now, uh, what you were in, uh, you won't be in it anymore. Uh, touch your neighbor, say neighbor. Uh, they try to confine me in a tomb, uh, just like Jesus. Uh, but when they come looking for me this time, uh, I ain't going to be there. Uh, I'm out of here. Uh, I'm out of my situation. Uh, not tomorrow, but right now. Take me out. I gotta get out of here. It's getting late. But then thirdly, when your Sunday comes here now, what happens is you will blow everybody's mind. 
Because they said that you would stay broke forever. But when they see you walking in abundance, it's going to blow their mind. They said you never have your mind straight. But when they see you walking in full faculties, walking in all your power of the Lord, they're going to blow their mind. Y'all ain't saying nothing. When they look at you and they see where you once were and where you're walking right now, because your neighbors say, neighbors, it's going to blow their mind. They said you never have nobody. But when you walk with a wonderful husband, when you walk with a beautiful wife, it's going to blow their mind. Let's do it and we'll sleep in it. Get ready to blow somebody's mind. I get my help now. I'm doing the best I can. Touch your neighbor, say neighbor. My Sunday is here. Now I'm not talking about Kronos, but I'm talking about a Kairos moment. Your Sunday can happen on Tuesday. Your Sunday can happen on Thursday. Baby, I am. I got to get out of here. But all sucks now. My Sunday is here. Not tomorrow. But it's coming right now. I've been waiting for change I've happened in my life But now I'm stepping in my now I'm stepping in my now Yes Coming out of yesterday And I'm coming in the now Coming out of last week I'm stepping in the now But then the last thing When your Sunday comes Somebody shout my Sunday's here now The last thing that happens is when the people begin to look at you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And when you look at your situation, and even though you thought it was dead, even though you thought it was done, even though you thought it wouldn't happen, I hear God say, I'm sending an angel of resurrection to your situation. I'm sending it to your dreams. I'm sending it to your desires. And your desires about to live, I feel the rock about to hit your dreams, and whatever you gave up on, whatever you threw in the towel on, I hear God say, I'm going to bring it alive, say yes, somebody shot my son, it's here right now, my dreams are coming alive, my vision is coming alive, promotion is coming, joy is coming, Peace is coming, provision is coming, sin, prosperity, now, now, now! My Sunday is not coming tomorrow. Sunday is here now. If you have struggled waiting on change, just meet me at this altar. I just want to pray. If you've been believing God for change, and change seems to be so elusive. I just want to pray with you that night. If people have tried to lock you in a prison that they didn't want you to get out of, 